All right, so you might be surprised at how sensitive our bodies are to pH levels. It's so important that our bodies stay within homeostasis of pH levels that if it's just a little bit off, we're looking at major symptoms that include but are not limited to confusion, fatigue, headaches, tremors, rapid heart rate that could be found in both extremes of the pH scale. In fact, it's so dangerous that medicine has its own name for people who have high acid levels in their systems, and it's called acidosis. And for those who have dangerously low levels of acid, alkalosis. You can just imagine what happens when such extremes of pH levels exist in a living organism. Polar and charged substances in our bodies will find it difficult to function regularly. Even the usual acid-base reactions themselves start to go wonky when there's an abundance in on one side of the pH spectrum. But do you want to know something really crazy? We eat, drink, and take in so many things of various pH levels. As you know from my last video, water has an H concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 7. But did you know that straight coffee is around 1 times 10 to the negative 5? Get this, tomato is 1 times 10 to the negative 4. Now compared to the other two I mentioned, tomatoes are the most acidic. Quick question, what happens to the H ion concentration if you have a bucket of tomato juice and you add coffee in it? Since coffee doesn't have as high of an H ion concentration present in it as tomatoes, your mixing the two would most likely result in H ion concentration somewhere in between 10 to the negative 4 for tomatoes and 10 to the negative 5 for coffee. But how do living organisms do it? Organisms use substances called buffers to nerf any changes in pH levels inside the body. Buffers help maintain a key concept called homeostasis, which is a way to maintain a balance. But how exactly do buffers work? Well, the majority of buffers are actually weak acids. And what do weak acids do? They donate protons, H ions, H3O+, hydrogen ions, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty normal for a weak acid, right? What makes it a buffer, however, is the ability to convert back to a weak base. If the proton concentration happens to be high, this same weak acid buffer that has already donated one of its protons in turn switches to a proton accepting base. So now it's ready to take in that proton and basically lower the concentration of H ions. But now the same buffer, which is now an acid again, surprise, surprise, is ready to donate a hydrogen ion once again whenever it needs to. Here's a real example of how buffers actually work in the body. Carbonic acid is everywhere in our blood. When inside our blood, carbonic acid breaks apart, or in other words, dissociates into bicarbonate and a proton, as shown here. Now, in a proper buffer, both sides of the double arrow have to exist in relatively equal concentrations. There has to be a nearly equal amount of carbonic acid as well as bicarbonate. So in the case of blood, if the proton or hydrogen concentrations happen to increase, these protons would react with bicarbonate ions and that would result in a reverse reaction back to carbonic acid. Now, this sort of sounds a little confusing, right? Well, Mr. Merg, you're now saying that you just created a carbonic acid? Uh, aren't those buffers supposed to remove acids? Well, yeah, Jimmy. I know where you might be confused here, so here's my answer to that. Look back at the definition of a Bronsted-Lowry acid, and it states that an acid donates a proton. What happens here is that the accumulated extra acid was taken up by bicarbonate, which happens to define what a base is, a molecule that takes up a hydrogen atom. In the grand scheme of things, that's one less hydrogen ion floating around in the blood because it's now stuck onto the bicarbonate, in which we call a carbonic acid. And remember, what determines the acidity or basicity of a solution is the concentration of H ions. 
so always look out for those. Are you still unsure? Drop a comment below, maybe someone watching will be able to explain it better. So the other direction works as well. Let's say the H ion concentration starts to dwindle in your blood. What happens next is now carbonic acid starting to really act like an acid and donating a proton away. This increases the H ion concentrations in the system and as carbonic acid loses its proton, it becomes a bicarbonate, a base which is ready to once again take in another H ion when the H ions begin to rise again. And the vicious cycle continues over and over. Pop quiz, what would happen to this buffer system if we were to add a base to the blood? Comment below, give me your best shot. Pause the video, think about it for a moment. Wait, I'll give you a hint. According to the bronsted lowry definition, what does a base do? All right, welcome back. According to the definition, a base accepts a proton, or in this case, an H ion. It doesn't matter what the base results in, but if you really want to know, it would be sodium and water. So what does that do to the reaction here? Well, it's all about balance, right? Since we've taken away a lot of H ions, this buffer will instinctively try to correct it by producing and replacing those missing H ions. All it's got to do is have carbonic acid on the left side release or donate one of its hydrogen ions while it converts into a bicarbonate. And there you have it. All right, awesome. This series is really making some progress. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved it. Share it with a friend. Got any questions, let me know. Comment below. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Peace.